Hello, my name is Sebastian. And today I want to talk to you about the optimal scaling of random walk metropolis algorithms through the lens of Bayesian large sample theory. This is joint work with Philippe Gagnon. To set the scene, um, let's recall some uh, basics about uh, metropolis algorithms. So a metropolis algorithm is a Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm where ba based on some current state theta, you propose a new state by sampling a normal distribution, which we write here as a standard normal distribution times the scaling matrix S. Then the metropolis algorithm proceeds by accepting a new uh, proposed value, which is called theta dash, by computing this acceptance ratio. The crucial question here is like how to choose the scaling matrix S. And common choices include, for example, here um, a, a proportional, uh, identity matrix. So L is some factor, and then we scale the identity matrix. Or if you want to be a little bit more sophisticated, you can also aim at matching the target covariance matrix. And this is usually done by something proportional to a Koletsky decomposition. But how exactly do we choose this value L? One way of choosing this value is the famous 23.4% rule. And briefly said, this rule states, states that you should set your scaling factor such that the acceptance probability of a random walk metropolis algorithm is around 23.4%. Maybe you have heard it in like 25%, but this is uh, the standard guideline. Should we always use this rule like this? Uh, are there any limitations or deviations from this? And this is what we want to investigate in this paper under a Bayesian framework. And to do that, we want to go a little bit into the details of the original theory that started to be developed in the 1990s. And as a, in, in, the, in the first work, as a baseline, the authors considered uh, target distributions of this form, which is quite interesting. So we see here that the target is factorizing as an, uh, in, uh, into independent uh, components. And based on that, the authors derive um, for example, that the as the number of dimension increases, we can derive a closed form expression for the expected square jumping distance. The expected square jumping distance is a measure of how well your Markov chain mixes or performs, and the closed form expressions enables us to optimize this function with respect to L and provide tuning guidelines, for example, by plugging in the optimal value that we derive here and plugging it here in the acceptance rate, where we will then find out that the rate is 23% as D goes to infinity. So how does a proof like that work? And on a very high level, um, I wanna give a, a part of the idea here. So what is going on in the uh, original proof is uh, roughly speaking, we look at the log of this acceptance probability, uh, which is essentially the ratio between the proposed and the original value. And we can see that we find this quadratic expansion here. And if you're familiar a little bit with large sample theory, this might be something that looks familiar to you. And the reason for that is that we can find a similar um, expansion of the log likelihood ratio for the number of data n being large. And we find the following quadratic expansion, you will see that um, the second part relates to the Fisher information matrix, for example, but we can see a clear connection on a, on a very high level, just that we, instead of having IID components, we have in this example, IID data, um, where these are the likelihood contributions. And instead of the these, we have ends everywhere. On this basis, we want to develop our theory of um, a large sample analysis of the random walk uh, metropolis algorithm. And for that, we need to set up some notation. Consider the following Markov chain. So we rescale all our Markov chains because the posterior distribution usually concentrates in order to obtain a non-trivial limit then, we need to change the scaling of our uh, matrix, yeah, of our Markov chain. Uh, 
then we will show that the Markov chains converge to another um, random walk metropolis algorithms that targets a Gaussian distribution with mean zero and covariance equal to the inverse Fisher information using this proposal distribution here. We can now state our first assumption. So this is, um, this is leveraging the idea that we mentioned before. This is essentially a quadratic expansion of the log likelihood in addition with other regularity um, assumptions, for example, posterior concentration. That usually means that in a Bayesian setting, we will get the Bernstein from Mies theorem, which means that the posterior distribution becomes closer and closer to a normal distribution that concentrates around a certain value and with a certain covariance matrix. In order to match this um, shrinking covariance matrix, uh, shrinking covariance matrix of the target, um, we also need to adjust the proposal. This is not a surprise. And also to make our um, mathematics a little bit easier, we will assume that the other chains start at stationarity. And this leaves us with our main result. So as a first interesting point, we can say that, yeah, indeed, the distributions of the Markov chain, so this is um, the distribution of the whole Markov chain indeed converges to the distribution of the limiting Markov chain, but more than that, we can also show that the accept expected acceptance probability does converge as well, which is very good because as we said earlier, this is what we use to tune the algorithm. But most importantly, we can show that the expected square jumping distance also converges in the case where we have n going to infinity as opposed to d going to infinity. And that is very important because we can now use the same kind of arguments that has been used in the past to derive formulas to optimize in the limit as a substitute. And here we have two examples for that. The problem obviously is that um, the formula depends on how we choose the proposed covariance matrix. We choose here, for example, the identity matrix. And in this case, we will get formula one. But if we match the target distribution, which in our case is the inverse uh, Fisher uh, uh, target covariance, with, which is the inf inverse Fisher information, we do get formula two. Just to point out the difference here is that if we completely match um, the target covariance, then we will get Euclidean norms here. But if we do not match the posterior covariance, well, then we need to take into account the, then we haven't taken into account um, the uh, information geometry on the target of the target in the algorithm. And we need to take it into account in the expected square jumping distance. So we want to make sure that our um, guidelines that we provide from this are not completely different than anything that has been done before. And indeed, it should um, be consistent with, with earlier results. As I said, these, these can work very well in practice. And this is, this is indeed what we find. So we start with a case um, where we do take the posterior covariance um, to match the proposal again. And in this case, we do get as now as d goes to infinity, we can see that our formula corresponds exactly to the formula that we get in traditional large uh, dimension, uh, large dimensional asymptotics. And we do correspondingly get exactly the right um, um, asymptotic optimally acceptance rate of 23.4%. But what is also interesting is that Potentially, we want to look at different um, proposals. And here, the story becomes a little bit more tricky. So for example, if we don't match the uh, posterior covariance, then as we saw in the case of the identity proposal, these quantities involve the Fisher information. If you look at the formula closely, you can um, heuristically uh, guess that this might converge whenever we can make sure that this quantity here allows for a law of large number. And that means that the Fisher information behaves in a certain way as the number of parameter grows. So there's an interesting connection to 
high dimensional statistical theory here. However, we cannot make a, a general statement without really making any exact assumption on the Fisher information. Okay, so now we want to use our, um, our results to provide guidelines for Bayesian practitioners. Um, for doing that, we suggest that um, for optimal performance and also for convenience, you try to match the posterior covariance um, with your proposal. And in particular, um, you can leverage the fact that you might know something about the Fisher information matrix, which is the case in many scenarios. So you might as well just um, use uh, information about that. And based on the setting, we do find that matching those, we get um, optimal values for the scaling parameter L and the optimal acceptance ratio that is associated with it. For example, in a one-dimensional case, 44%. This is a well-known fact, for example, um, in previous work, it, had be, it, it has been shown analytically that in a one-dimensional case, the optimal expected square jumping distance, uh, the, op, the, the expected square jumping distance is optimized um, if this is around 44.04%. Um, but this also helps the practitioner to say, well, let's say I want, I have four parameters in my model. How should I tune the algorithm? You should choose L to be roughly 2.42 and target um, uh, acceptance probability of 30%. And in order to demonstrate that what we present here uh, corresponds to, um, to practical use cases. We also ran a logistic regression on uh, patent data. Logistic regression is, is a very good example. It's very commonly used in practice. And the Bernstein von Mies theorem is in many scenarios um, fulfilled. So we can just use that. And as we said earlier, we just try to match uh, the posterior covariance. In this case, we do that by calculating the fish information, which is analytically available here, and evaluate it at the MLE. And here are our results. We report two different things for several dimensions here. We report the optimal, uh, the, 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 the optimal integrated autocorrelation time, or better, the values of L that optimize the integrated autocorrelation time and the values that optimize the expected square jumping distance. The values of the integrated autocorrelation time are just for reference to show that we indeed find um, values that are optimal under several, um, under several metrics, not only the expected square jumping distance, they also work very well under integrated autocorrelation time. It's just that the latter um, is very, very difficult to estimate. So we have a very high Monte Carlo noise but except the Monte Carlo noise, we can really see that there's a strong correspondence between the theoretical guidelines that we provide for every dimension. Um, just go back and compare and the guide and the optimal values that you find empirically by running the algorithm with different parameters L and find the ones that are optimal. Um, we really would like to continue this work with, uh, um, with other algorithms and finding the parameter dimension, uh, finding para parameter dimension um, dependent guidelines. So uh, Bayesian practitioners can optimize the algorithms for any setting. Um, we have also done some previous work in the similar direction. For example, this previous paper that I had with George Delegionidis, Arno Gousset and Mike Pitt uh, on pseudomarginal methods. And similar ideas have also been used um, in George, Arnaud, and Mike's paper on the correlated pseudo-marginal method. Those are really interesting papers. Check them out. Thanks very much for listening. <laughs>